What's going on everybody? I'm Zach and welcome back to Workshop Edits. In today's project, I want to take you through how I built our breakfast nook. Let's go ahead and get started. Hi. All right, so we are in the shop. I have all of the materials that I need for the project. We are gonna head over to the table saw and start breaking things down. That's gonna include the plywood, which is gonna make up the top of the breakfast nook, as well as the bottom supports, as well as the two by fours, which are gonna make up the framing for it. So let's go ahead and get started. So the framing of the breakfast nook is built entirely from two by fours, super easy, but I don't want it to be three and a half inches tall. I think that's gonna look too bulky in our space. So what I'm gonna do now is just rip the rounded edge off of one side of each of the two by fours that I have, flip them over and then rip off the other rounded edge to a final width of two and a half inches. Then we can get on to framing this thing out. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, so everything is cut to its final length and width and we are ready to begin assembly. So I have these cross supports to go along with the two uh, individual long pieces for each of the boxes that I'm building. I'm just gonna clamp everything up and then pre-drill some holes and then drive in some screws. And it should be relatively straightforward. I'm basically just building two boxes. Okay, so everything is assembled. I also pulled together the two boxes to make the L. And what I also wanted to do was bring it inside to the space just to make sure that it fits. Sometimes walls aren't exactly 90 degrees. Mine definitely aren't, but not out of 90 degrees enough that this isn't gonna fit there. It was also helpful because I was able to mark out all of the stud locations and figure out if any of these um, lateral supports needed to be shifted over for whatever reason because I wouldn't be able to drive a screw in. So I need to actually move a few of them. I'm gonna do that right now. Okay, so any of the cross supports that were interfering with stud locations have been moved. All of the holes are pre-drilled and I drove in some big three and a half inch screws into all those holes. I think I want to mount this next because I think it's gonna be easier to cut the plywood to its final size once this thing is in place. And I also cut some big four by four, uh, 14 and a half inch spacers because that's gonna be the height uh, of this bench from the ground. That way I can put these in strategic locations and set this on top of it and then check for level and then drive in those screws. And I also think it's gonna be a lot easier to mount this thing uh, from the top uh, and not have the plywood in the way. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And if for whatever reason my stud locations are off, then I'm just gonna repeat that process of finding the studs, pre-drilling holes, and driving those screws back in. Okay, so just finished installing the frame of the bench. It feels really secure. Uh, I wouldn't sit on it without those four by four supports in there for now. And eventually I'm going to add some actual decorated supports in there, but it's secure into the wall. It's good to go for now. The next thing I did was bring in the plywood and actually set it on both of the uh, framing structures just to make sure that it fit. And I was able to mark out exactly the length that I'm gonna need to cut it now, which was really helpful. I also noticed that because it's not exactly 90 degrees, I'm gonna have to notch just a tiny angle on the longer piece just so those two will sit up flush to each other. I'm gonna cut these to their final size. Then we're gonna head back into the kitchen and we're going to fasten them to the bench top just using brad nails. I don't wanna glue these in place if for whatever reason I have to change them out or I need to modify something after you know using this thing for a couple of weeks. There's no way I'm gonna be able to remove them if I glue them down and brad nails is gonna hold it down totally fine. Thank you. 
All right, so the bench tops are installed. Those are just placed on top of the framing and I secured it using a bunch of brad nails just all over the place. I'll go back later and fill those in with some wood filler before painting. This is a really complicated project. Right, let me take that back. This is a really simple project, but it's actually really complicated because you just need everything to line up perfectly and walls aren't straight. So it's just been a lot of back and forth between the house and the shop just to figure out and get things right and it's still not perfect. So the last thing I'm going to do is take the remaining plywood and cut strips that are gonna go on the front of the bench and it's just gonna hide the framing of the structure. I haven't decided yet if I'm gonna round over the bottom parts of it to make it a little bit smoother or I'm just gonna keep it as is. But for now, we're just gonna cut the strips at the table saw and then install those as well. All right, so we just finished installing the bench top. I used a flush trim bit just to get all of the plywood exactly flush to the front of the bench. In reality, that probably would have been easier to do in the shop, but once I had it mounted, I didn't want to take it off and it was a big deal. It just made a little bit of mess in the house, which meant I had to clean that up. Now what we're gonna do is turn our attention to the supports of the bench. So we went through a lot of different um, design options for this, whether we wanted to have a floating appearance or we wanted the entire bottom to be covered so that you couldn't get uh, access to underneath it, or if we wanted to have drawers down there for whatever reason, but since there's a kitchen table there, it's just gonna be kind of weird. What we ended up landing on was a pretty simple design that has two outside pieces that are kind of angled, and then a box kind of square shape in the back corner. That way you have support in the back corner and on the outsides, and it's gonna be plenty strong enough with it anchored to the wall and having those supports underneath it. All right, so let me catch you up on everything that I just finished doing. All of the support pieces are cut to their final length and width at the table saw. I also used uh, the table saw blade just slightly raised up to route a couple of grooves on the outside supports. I think aesthetically it just adds a little bit. It was a design that my wife and I landed on. The middle support, which is just a box with mitered corners, is built around a couple of scrap 4x4s that I have. That's solid and assembled and good to go. I'm not actually gonna even mount that from the underside. I'm just gonna slide it in. It's such a tight fit that I don't even think I need to. And for whatever reason, it does shift over time. No big deal, I can just add a couple of screws, but I think it's gonna work out really good. So the next thing that I wanna do is take the two outside support pieces and drill some pocket hole screws on the upper inside edge because we're gonna use pocket hole screws to attach it to the framing that we already installed. The other thing is I need to take a couple of extra two by four pieces and mount them on the under inside of the framing uh, using just some screws because I want to have more lateral space for those supports to mount to. All right, so we are now ready for final assembly. So what I'm gonna do is take the outside support pieces, which are totally good to go. They got their pocket holes pre-drilled in them. I'm gonna take the middle support, bring that inside and slide it into place and just leave it there. It's gonna be good to go. The last thing I'm gonna have to do is because our walls have baseboards along the edge and I don't wanna spend a bunch of time scribing on the bottom back outside support pieces. So I'm just gonna take those pieces, line them up exactly where I wanna mount them and then use my multi-tool, which I never use, but Man, when, when, it, when you need to use it, it really comes in handy. And I'm just going to notch out uh, spaces so that those boards can slide directly up against the wall. It's gonna look really nice and clean and flush. If for whatever reason I mess up, you can always just add a little bit of paint and touch up those places, but I think it's gonna work out really good and it's gonna look really clean. Once those pieces are notched out, I'm just gonna use my speed square to line it up, make sure everything is vertical, perpendicular from the ground and from the wall. Then we're gonna drive in those pocket hole screws and it should be really strong. Once everything is mounted and screwed into place, this thing is going to be ready for paint. So we can go ahead and do that.
All right, so that is gonna wrap it up for this project. I hope you guys enjoyed it. This is just part one of us redoing this kitchen area. We are also going to be building a new kitchen table that's gonna fit the space a lot better. Overall, really happy. Hi. Really happy with how this uh, build came out. Uh, I think it's super clean, modern, fits the space really well. Harley clearly loves it. So uh, yeah, if you enjoyed it, I'd love it if you would subscribe to the channel, hit that like button, and I will see you guys next time on whatever it is that I'm building. Bye. Hey. Do you like the breakfast nook? Oh, thank you. Thank you.